For the last and final of the hand rules uh, for, uh, for magnetism, I'm going to show you one that's especially useful well, for moving charges in magnetic fields, but it also works with a wire because inside a wire there's moving charges. But the key difference here is that here we're looking at a force. So if we care about where the force is, then we have to use this third hand rule. Now this hand rule has a left hand rule and it has a right hand rule. So I'm going to sort of split the board here and say right hand rule. Now first of all, the left hand rule is going to work for electrons and other negative particles. So anything with a negative charge, you're going to use the left hand rule for. This might sound really lame, but I used to teach my students, well, call these electrons instead of electrons. So if you think of them as electrons, then you're going to use your right hand for this. And the right hand rule is going to be for, uh, well, if you have current, it's going to be the direction of current, or it's also going to work for um, positive charges. So for example, you might have things like um, a proton, or you might have a positron, or maybe an alpha particle. Anything with a positive charge goes here. So this trick, now a lot, of, uh, a lot of teachers show students this way. I don't know if you've ever seen this thing, but I never liked this. I always thought this was really hard to remember. But I'd always been taught this way. I remember this is a few years ago. I was sitting with my wife, and um, of course I'm very nerdy, and I love uh, things like uh, Star Trek and Star Wars and all that stuff. And my wife, well, she went to business school, and she did all this businessy stuff, and she never really cared too much about Star Wars. So I thought, well, if she's going to be married to me, we should for sure watch Star Wars, especially the first three movies. So I remember um, we we're near the end of the third original movie. So this is, uh, what would that be, a Return of the Jedi. Uh, I don't know if you remember this movie, but um, I thought it was awesome. I remember when I was a little kid, uh, I thought it was the greatest movie ever. But uh, I don't know if you know this, but at the end of that movie, there's this evil, ugly emperor guy, and uh, he's actually trying to uh, kill Darth Vader. Um, and so what he's doing, he's, he's holding out his hands and he's like shooting out lightning out of his hands in order to try to kill Darth Vader. I remember when I saw that, I paused the DVD, I was like, whoa, I have an idea. This is how I'm going to teach students how to use their hand rules. Of course, my poor wife, she probably thought it was absolutely crazy. But uh, so this is what I'm going to call the Star Wars way of doing it. And you'll see why. It's a little bit lame, but if you remember it, that's what counts. So I'm not going to use this way because I don't like it. I never remember which is which. I'm going to use this way, the emperor sort of shooting out at you. So the left or right hand rule, let's say the right, uh, left hand rule, I need to draw a hand. So one, two, three, four fingers and a thumb. Again, my hand looks like a giraffe or some weird sort of thing, but this is supposed to be a left hand like this, okay? And then for right hand rule, well, that's going to be obviously the right hand. So we'll see how I can draw that. Three, four. There's a reason I'm not an artist. You can clearly see that now. But if you understand what I mean, that's what counts. Now your fingers, in this right here, the fingers are going to be, instead of lightning shooting out of your fingers, that's going to be the magnetic field, or B, the magnetic field. So that's going to be your fingers here. Fingers are going to be B. Now your thumbs, unfortunately that's going to be a little bit, uh, there's not really an easy way to remember it, but that's the velocity of the particles. Okay, so depending on what this is, if it's a current or if it's an electron, then it goes this way like this. So your thumb is going to represent the particle's velocity. But what I like about this, though, is this one, this last one here. That the palm is the force. So the palm points in the direction of the force. So in this case right here, if the way I've drawn my hand like this, my palm, you know, this part right here, is facing that way. So I'm going to draw that with an X. That's going to be the force here. The force is going to be an X because it's going into the page. Same thing here. So your palm is the force. So with your hands then, uh, maybe I'll do it like this so you can see at least left hand rule. My fingers are the magnetic field lines. My thumb is the velocity of the particle and my palm points in the direction of the force. Same thing with this. 
Now keep in mind though, these might be this way, it might be like this, like this, it might be totally weird angles. But the key is just remembering to have your hand like this. Don't do like this. Because then uh, your velocity of your particle and the magnetic field lines are parallel. And if you remember the equations from before with the force for magnetic particles, it had to do with the sine of an angle, sine would be zero, so there'd be no force. So it has to be like this. Okay? So this is how I like to remember the uh, third hand rule for showing these things. Now maybe I should give you a few examples just to show how this is used. So uh, maybe my example is, let's say it's a positive particle going to the right. Okay, so if I have a positive particle going to the right and it's going to enter a magnetic field, and I'm, I'm trying to keep this in 3D, so my magnetic field is going to be a bunch of X's. What I'm going to write here is B into page. That's what this really represents. Okay, so I have a positive particle zipping along to the right and it's going to enter a place where the magnetic field lines are going into the page. In other words, that way. If you have a piece of paper, then it's obviously down into the page. In this case, it's that way, the way I'm showing you. Remember, this is 3D. So first of all, try to think, which hand rule do I use? Is it a positive particle, a negative particle? Remember, these are electrons, which just sounds really lame, or this is anything positive. So right hand rule. Now what I have to do then is line up my hand the right way. So if you look at this rule, the thumb goes in the velocity. So I may as well go, so there we go. So uh, I don't know if you needed that sound effect, but the thumb goes in the direction of the velocity. Now, which way do my fingers have to point? My fingers can point like this or like this or like whatever. So try to keep in mind this one, because the magnetic field lines are into the page, that means what I have to do is point my hand like this. That might seem really awkward and weird, but that's how I do it. Which way is my palm going? Well, my palm is up. So because of that, this particle will then go like this. It'll curve that way. That's how it works. This is actually a big part behind uh, particle accelerators or even things like a mass spectrometer. This is actually the key thing that you use in order to separate things because it turns out the radius of the circle that this particle will take is dependent on uh, some other stuff, but also partly its mass. It turns out it's related to the charge and mass, but it's related to its mass. So that means more massive particles will have a different radius. So if you've ever seen on CSI, for example, they want to figure out what something's made of, they just pop it into a machine, they usually play some cool music, always have some blue background or green or something, but uh, then the machine spits out and says, this is made of, uh, I don't know, you know, quartz and zinc or whatever. The reason the machine knows this is it actually does this. It takes the particles and separates them, shoots them through something like this right here with a magnetic field. And by looking at where the particles land, you know, on the other side, looking at the radius of that circle, they can actually tell what uh, particles it was. It's not exactly that simple, but that's the main key thing behind it. Let's do another example. What if I have, uh, this time let's say a negative particle, it's maybe an electron, and it's also going to the right, but this time I'm gonna make my magnetic field lines uh, down. So this time I don't have to really define it, but that's my, those are my magnetic field lines. They're actually going down. So not into the page or out of the page, but actually just straight down. Those are really lousy arrows, sorry. But. So again, now think which hand rule do I use? I use the left hand rule because it's an electron. I use my left hand rule and I put my thumb in the direction of the velocity. So that's that way. Where do my fingers have to point though? My fingers have to point down. So I have to put my thumb like, or my fingers like this. This is going to be it. It's a little bit hard to hold my hand like this, but I don't know if you can see it. It's like this. So my thumb points to the right. My fingers point down. So which way does my palm point? My palm comes out of the page. So that means this particle will go, so it goes uh, out of page. That's what this particle will do. So this, if it's an electron, for example, in real life, what it'll do is it'll pass through this and actually go like, whoa, out of the page like this and start to circle like that. Well, depending on how I've oriented, but it'll, it'll for, sure, it for sure curve out of the page. So that's an example. Now, um, here's another one. This time I have a neutron going to the right 
And let's say this time my magnetic field lines are straight up. Let's say, so those are my magnetic field lines. This is sort of example, oh, sort of first example, that was a second example. Here's the last example. A neutron flies through a magnetic field lines going up. What happens? Well, you have to think, which hand rule do I use? Is there a hand rule for neutrons? No. This is a trick question. Because neutrons have no charge, they're not affected by magnetic fields. In other words, this neutron is going to fly happily right through. Okay, so no change in its path. It's just going to fly right through this thing. It's not going to care at all that there was anything going on. Okay, so this neutron is not going to care. It's going to fly right through. We could use this as well with a wire. And if we had a wire, we would just say that the velocity in a wire would just be the direction of the current. In other words, the direction of the charges. So that's the only other part you would have to do. I think these are actually a really useful way to remember them. Um, maybe you don't like my Star Wars way, but whatever. As long as you can use hand rules, it doesn't matter. But I, I personally like this hand rule way because that's how I remember it. I think of these magnetic field lines, you know, shooting out of my fingers. And I think of the palm. It might sound lame, but my palms, those are the force. Don't they use the word the force a lot in uh, Star Wars? You know, may the force be with you. So my palms, I like to think of it because I can force someone away, right? So that's how I remember that the palm is the force. So that's how I always remember this, and once I saw that, I never forgot uh, how to work with um, these hand rules.